All right, you guys, picked up a new little buddy this week. This is Pasta. Super, super cool little guy. He was actually a surrender that we got. And, uh, you know, generally when people surrender stuff or we do a rescue, they're not in the best shape and malnutrition, dehydration, and metabolic bone disease and all kinds of stuff is set in. And this was not the case in this one. The guy had just a ridiculous setup. I can't wait to show you guys next week. I and mean, he had like foggers, he had multiple heat setups, he had all kinds of crazy stuff on there to give this guy just an incredible life. And they just didn't have a whole bunch of time for him. And so he said, you know what, I want to find a good home for him. And so we were able to help him out with that. So this is a pasta. Um, talking to the guy it was kind of crazy. God totally used him to just break me. He's going through some stuff that I went through a couple years ago. And it was just, you know, my life turned out totally different than the direction his is headed with it. And it was just kind of that reminder of even though things didn't work out the way I wanted them to, I was so blessed and so protected and so taken care of. And so we never know what God's going to use to get a hold of us or what God's going to use to reach us. It can be something like a snake. It can be somebody's testimony. It can be absolutely anything. But this is a cool reminder. And I know all the breeders are saying, well, it's just normal. And that is true. But the dude has a super, super cool temperament, as you can see. And I'm looking forward to showing people what a normal one looks like. This is what they look like when you find them in Africa. This is just kind of a wild pattern. He does have a, like a lot of yellow, a lot of spotting on the side. He's a beautiful little guy, a little bit of iridescence on him too. But very, very cool for the collection. He's going to be awesome to use for educational stuff and schools and churches. So we're looking forward to getting him better and better about being played with and held and have little kids poking him in the head. But this is the newest member of the cold-blooded army. Say hi, pasta. Hey. you guys guess what time it is it's Christmas time only they bite we have a clutch of spider by pie that are starting to pip out these guys aren't due to hatch for another few days but I already have a couple of heads popping out so we're gonna go ahead and cut these guys and see what they look like uh, the first one to pip out was this little guy right here and this one was super wrinkled up expelled a bunch of water a few weeks ago so I was kind of worried about that and planning on cutting it this weekend just to make sure he was okay so and then another little one right next to him popped his head out looks like this little guy is going to be some kind of spider he definitely has a goofy pattern on his head and we'll see what the rest of these bad boys are people always ask about the cutting and all of that uh, as long as you wait long enough to do it it's not a bad thing at all it doesn't hurt the snakes it doesn't cause any problems I'm not cutting the snakes I'm just cutting the eggs and sometimes there's a little bit of blood because there are some blood vessels that run through, but I'm not hurting anybody. And so what I will do is just kind of make a little slit in these and then let these sit for a few days. The babies will soak up the rest of their yolks and then we will see what we get. But I'm kind of impatient, so we'll start checking these out now. This one, see if you guys can see that. Let's see here. Try and look down there without bothering the snake too much. Oh boy, making a mess. Definitely got some spider on there. And there is something else mixed with that. I don't know if that's, um, I got cut a lot of blood vessels, so it's kind of bloody. There is definitely something in there to where it's more white on the sides than normal. I don't know if that's some calico or if that is some pastel. But we will see what happens once that one comes out some more. This little guy's already popping us. Oh, he went back in. Said, I'm not ready. Not yet, daddy. Kind of see down in there a little bit. Definitely has some bright colors on him. Not sure what that one is. Well, I know what it is. This little guy, you can tell from his little head right there, definitely has some spider going on. So we gotta break this little seal and see. Man. These guys are really funky looking on the sides. Like not spider-ish, I don't know. Usually they don't have that white reduction on the sides. It's almost like there's, like I said, either calico or pastel. Um, so there's a chance one of the parents was hit for something, which is kind of cool. 
the goal from these, the pie, the pie we had was a very, very high white pie. So I was hoping to hit the odds and possibly get a white wedding out of this. But about halfway through cutting these and I have not seen anything that even shows pie. Let's see here, you definitely got some spider going. You can tell on the side. I love the spider. They, um, it's just such a cool pattern. But it does seem like they do have sometimes some genetic issues. Sometimes they kind of have that wobble uh, where it's more of a mental defect. And I can't judge on that one because I'm a little special too. That's a pretty little snake though. Looks like a little het pied in there. Come here, buddy. Yeah, normal pattern. Just looks like a little het pied. Very pretty though. This guy right here. Still have not seen any visible pies, which is a little frustrating. That one, well, man, hard to tell. Looks like another het pied. Separate these two real quick. Hmm, it definitely has some pattern reduction and some goofiness to it. So it's got some spider. I'm not sure if it has any pied in there, but well, I think it has spider. Let's see here. Eh, that maybe used to be a het pied. I'll see more. I don't want to take these all the way out of the eggs because they are probably still absorbing a little bit of their yolk. So I want to make sure I don't rush anything on that and make sure they have plenty of time to soak that up. Heading out of town tomorrow afternoon though, so I'm trying to make sure these are at least cut so that way they can get out and move around if they need to and make sure nobody doesn't get out. All right, egg number eight. It's the last one. Let's see what we have here. Well... Looks like another het pied. So, didn't really hit the odds we were going for that. Like I said, we're trying to hit a white wedding at least. And it doesn't look like we were successful in that. Uh, well, definitely weren't successful in that. I'm not sure how many of these are showing pied. Kind of starting to wonder if this was a pied clutch or not. Because I didn't see pied on anything. This one looks like another het pied. Um, this one definitely has a little spider thing going on the side, which is cool. And we will see once these guys come all the way out what they look like and what they do for us. This one, you know, it's hard to tell with all the veins in the way. Definitely has that spider going. And I love that. It's absolutely beautiful morph. I'll keep you guys updated. These come out though. You know, every few weeks in our church, we do communion. And it's always such a cool thing and such a special time. And it's always been something that's kind of weird for me. Like I've talked before about how as Christians, we believe just some, some like crazy stuff that is out there. And we believe it with all of our hearts. And sometimes communion is kind of that way for me where it's just so far out there. And it's hard for me to wrap my mind around it and to really understand and fully grasp it. Like, what is it that having some stale bread and some cheap juice has to do with my salvation. You know, Jesus talks about taking the bread and taking the wine, and it's his, blood, it's his, his body and his blood. And like, it seems like a zombie movie, which don't get me wrong, like I'm all about the zombie stuff, but it's just so far out there, and I don't understand it. And then there's a the whole thing with like the crazy Catholics and the transubstantiation and all that good stuff. But it's just such a weird thing for me. You know, why would Jesus say to eat his body and to drink his blood? And I think we get so caught up in the words and what was said as opposed to the meaning behind it. And it comes up in all of the Gospels and so many different times throughout the Bible. 25 different passages mention communion and breaking bread and doing all that stuff in remembrance of Jesus. And every single time it starts out the same way. The first thing he does is he gives thanks. And it's so beautiful. You know, it's... It's bread and it's some juice or some wine. Not a big deal, but to give thanks for it. And that's one of the reasons we give thanks every time we eat a meal. You know, growing up, our parents always said, clean your plate, don't leave any food. They're starving kids in China, they're starving kids in India, they're starving kids wherever. And uh, it's true. They're starving kids here in America too. And so we're so blessed to have 
our daily bread, to have a meal each day, to be able to, you know, feed ourselves, feed our kids, take care of our families. God always provides, and so that the first part is giving thanks and being appreciative of what we have when so many people don't. And the rest of it is, well, it's still kind of weird. You know, I was at a church before and they used Hawaiian bread for communion. It was incredible. It's good, sweet bread. Like, I send a lot. I need a big piece, Pastor, hook me up. And uh, it's different now where I am, but it still has the same meaning and it's still the same thing. And back in biblical times, they'd always tell people to put up a monument raise a huge stone monument, put up an Ebenezer, put up an altar, do something so that people remember something huge happened there. And so communion is kind of our, like our modern day pillar. It's our modern day uh, way to remember something huge that was given for us because somebody loved us so much that they were willing to pay the price for us to have their body broken, to bleed for us, to have the flesh ripped from their body and to be murdered for us we were forgiven. Somebody loved us enough to say, you know what, you're going to screw up every day of your life and I'm going to take that punishment for you. And that's pretty darn cool. And there's some days where I feel about that big when I think about it and there's some days when I'm like, man, this is a cool deal. But at the end of the day, we know we are forgiven for the stupid stuff that we do. And thank God for that because I know I do a lot of stupid stuff. If you guys ever have any questions on anything, if there's anything we can do for you, anything we can pray for you about, if you have questions on communion or anything like that, please feel free to reach out. We're always here for you. Uh, take communion, man. It's a good way to remember Jesus, to remember what he did for us, and to celebrate the forgiveness and that gift of eternal life that we have through Jesus. I love you guys. May you be blessed to be blessing those around you, and I'll catch you next time.